and I was just almost hypnotised by this beautiful call. It's like a cathedral bell or a church bell continuously ringing. Once you've heard this amazing call of South Island Kokaka, it'd be hard to stop looking for it. There's a bird here somewhere. I've been looking for the South Island species for 43 years. One late afternoon, just before dark at Lake Monowai, I heard this most amazing ethereal church bell ringing call and thought, I think that must be the call of Kokako. I started getting interested whether these birds were here or not. So a cup of tea or a cup of coffee? And I started very long expeditions to try and find the bird. This was 2001 and you're with um, Ron. Ron talked about other things. That's the only difference between him and me. All I talk about is the blooming bird. <laughs> <laughs> this is in Granbull Forest, just north of Greymouth, between Greymouth and Reefton. We went looking for Kokako on a number of trips. You had seen it around there, hadn't you? Yeah, glimpses. Kokako are a reasonably big bird bigger than a tui and smaller than a kereroo. And they have a distinct wattle under their bill. The North Island one is generally blue and the South Island one generally orange. The members of the wattled bird family are huia, that's now extinct, and saddleback. And there's a North Island and a South Island saddleback, as there is a North Island and South Island kōkākō. Often on these trips, we do do a bit of playback. We play back the North Island Kokaku call. One of the objectives is to try and get the bird to start talking. We might have recorded. That's right, when Ron was playing back a uh, recording, yeah. a bird answered that certainly right. was very, very interesting. Amazing call, very shortly after the finish of his playback. Which might have been a response from Kokako. Granville Forest is a sad story because the birds now are very quiet most of the year. The predator numbers have just risen enormously. Has there been a positive, obvious recording ever? Yes, but it's not official. Only two pairs of ornithological ears have heard it. And this was a chap in, who lived in Westport. He had seen Kokako behind Charleston in the western Paparoa forests. He had recorded and perfect recording of Kokako without a shadow of doubt. So where's that now? <sighs> it's a tragedy, absolute mm. tragedy. It had a house fire and lost everything. Well, this is a manufactured from what we heard. This is what it sounds like. One of the most amazing calls I've heard in the bush in New Zealand, full stop. Very strong notes. If you're close, you, they almost, you almost topple over. That's just so beautiful. I don't think it'll take any longer than four hours unless we're desperately slow. The hopes that we can save this bird for generations to come so that our 
grandchildren and our grandchildren's grandchildren will be able to hear this amazing call in the natural habitat. And the sad thing is, that opportunity might now be too late. We might be too late. So very sad. You want a few tears? <laughs> We are at Canaan, which is on the edge of the Abel Tasman National Park. How often are you coming in here? Lately, it's been every two to three weeks. So you've made this a bit of a HQ for you? Yes, close to home. And one area in the centre, when I was in with some North Island Kokako ecologists, they thought they heard two birds. I have had sightings in the past and totally confident the bird's there. Now, there's a small possibility that it's songbirds that have remembered Kokaka that I'm following, rather than actual Kokaka. Look what I found! <laughs> Is it medicine? Oh, it's medicine, yeah. <laughs> I reckon it's R18 medicine. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> Ever been carted out in a helicopter? No, never seriously injured, just sometimes strains and sprains, but no breakages. We're not bad for 75. Very lucky for an old bugger, aren't I? Very lucky. No heart attack here. Oh! Oh, my camp. Oh, great. Tent still there. Yep. Looks as dry as a bone. The workers are no problem, as long as the keyers haven't made a hole for them to get inside. I love my weka. They quite like it when I arrive. I mean, when you're eating food, this crumbles. In close to this tent camp is a hot spot area where I've heard kokako. We're heading over to a camera and a model bird I've used in this case. Cameras are working for us all the time. If I came in here to try and find a kokako, I might get a glimpse of the bird in three months. There's probably only one or two birds left. Started with five cameras and I'm up to 21 in total in this area. So now we go looking at images. Oh, a rat. A damned rat. Look at that. Rats, 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 rats. This is what this camera does. It activates with infrared on motion. No cooker. But we live in hope. Walking to another camera site. The bird must be on its way out. How they've survived till now with all the predators. In the South Island, food at certain times of the year probably gets quite grim. So they're possibly more reliant on insects. They might have to spend more time on the ground where they're more vulnerable to predators. We're coming down into an area that's been quite a hot area in terms of interesting calls. I call this Thicket Saddle. In September 2020, when I was servicing a camera, sticking batteries and new batteries in a camera, and suddenly from this gully, from down here where we are now, I heard two calls which were identical to North Island Kokako. But what was absolutely and truly remarkable is after these wonderful calls, the tui above me, which were just making normal calls up to them, suddenly changed completely. They started making alarm calls. One of the birds started copying one of the kokako that called. It was just a dramatic change. I'm sustained by those moments when the bird decides to reveal itself. Yeah, there's a weka here moving around, and usually when I'm just on the point of thinking I give up, the bird calls, and I'm hooked for another five years. <laughs> no kokako on this. If I found the bird and got a photograph, 
we've got some positive evidence, would be extremely delighted, of course. I'll probably have a few days off. Even. But then there's still a lot of work to do, yes. We've got to try and save the bird from extinction. Do you ever imagine what it was like before Europeans came? Absolutely amazing. Take me back there. Make me a little craft, a time machine craft. There would be South Island Kokako, where you could hear in reasonable numbers at times. There would be heaps of Tui and bowbirds and smaller birds. There would be the little bush wren, now extinct. And going back in time, the ads built, which would be like the weka here on the ground. And then the mower, a long time ago, there would be a wee bush mower in here. Birdland. I love the bush. It's magical. If I drop dead right now, you can bury me here, and I'll have had a good life. <laughs>